The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Fairbanks, Alaska on your new fire apparatus, job number 32583. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Here are a few images uh, that were taken at the Pierce plant of the front of your vehicle. We'll now start with your orientation starting down at the front bumper area. Just under the front bumper, we'll find two open-ended tow hooks located and attached to the frame rail. On the outside edge of the front bumper inset, you'll find two air horns, passenger and driver side. Directly in the center, just under the front bumper, is where you'll find a forward-facing floodlight. Located recessed in the front bumper, you'll find your low and high beam headlights. The high beam is on the inside. Directly in the center, you'll find your siren PA speaker system. Moving up onto the bumper extension, you'll find on the passenger side a mechanical siren. Moving just inside of that location in the bumper extension, you'll find a hose storage location. And then moving over to the driver's side, you'll find a swivel discharge. Let's take a look at the side. You can see that there is a side facing bumper extension emergency light. Here's your two and a half inch reduced down to inch and a half swivel discharge. It is foam and water capable. As we move inside, you'll find dry deck material inside and also a cutout for the hose on the driver's side. Moving up onto the front, you'll see your location, University, just above the Pierce logo. As we move to the brow, Fairbanks, Alaska on the top, and also a five running lights located in the center, forward facing flood, and then your Opticom at the very top over the passenger's area. You'll also find your emergency warning light bar directly above on the roof. Let's now move to the uh, driver's area. First, just to the rear section of the driver's door is where you'll find your side-facing camera. You'll also find the location for your shoreline inlet. This is a 20 amp auto eject plug. And just to the rear of that is where you'll find a side-facing emergency warning light. Let's move downward from this location to the fender cutout area. You do have additional storage located here between the two release mechanisms. We'll drop down and allow you coverage for storage inside. Directly above this, above the Eagle American flag, you'll find a side facing scene light. Let's go ahead and start now with the pump panel. We'll identify some of the items within this area. Let's go ahead and start uh, with a few of the warning labels. First, starting with this warning label regarding fall hazard. As we move down from this location near the foam functions, you'll find a foam failure warning label. And as we move down to the lower left-hand corner, you'll find a warning label regarding entanglement hazard. Just to go back to that foam failure, please do not mix different brands, consistencies, or types. As we move back up into the gray area, master intake. As we move to the right, you'll find your master discharge. In between the two of those gauges is going to be your vacuum and pressure test gauge ports. They are currently plugged. Let's move to the right-hand side where you'll find your water level indicator. That's the blue module on the far right. Then let's move all the way down here. We'll talk a little bit about panel lights. This is a switch regarding your panel lights. We'll activate all the panel lights within this area. Just down from that, you'll find a pump engaged. This is a green indicator that your pump is properly engaged. And as we move further down, you'll find a red air horn button. Moving further down, you'll find your pump compartment heater. Just beneath that, you'll find a, a switch here that's currently not in the position. This is a spare. And if you choose at some later date to add a switch, this could be a location for it. Let's go ahead and move to the FRC in control. This is your pressure throttle governor. If illuminated yellow would be a check engine light. If illuminated red, it would be a stop engine light. Moving down below, you'll find all of your engine diagnostic information displayed in these four areas. Moving up from that area, you'll find a digital readout for your RPMs. Moving further down in the gray, there is a silence button which allows you to silence the audible alarm. Moving to the right, you'll find a blue menu button. This allows you to scroll through the various menu functions of your FRC module. In the upper left here, in the center area, you're going to find your throttle control. Uh, you'll find two uh, buttons here, blue, one for pressure and the other is throttle. Those are the two modes that you can operate in. 
as we move down, you'll find a red, which will allow you to move to the idle position. The green is for presets, which will be set up in advance. And then just below that, you'll see the two yellow, increase or decrease. Let's move to the left-hand side where you'll find your pump discharge. This is going to be a digital readout and also your pump intake. Once again, a digital readout. This is your in-control FRC360. Moving to the right side of the modules, we're going to find this black module. This is going to be an audible speaker. The outer edge of this bezel does allow you to dampen the sound volume. As we move through the discharges, I'm not going to name all of them, but these are predominantly laid out at the very top with speed lay, front and driver side discharge, and then the lower section is going to be all your two and a half inch discharges. As we move to the two wheel locations, you'll find your passenger side large diameter and also your deluge discharges. As we move to the right, you'll find your class B foam dial. This is from FECON, and then you're also going to find all of its information in this area regarding the inductor, whether it's on or off or in a flush mode. Moving down, you do have an on, off, and open and close for your foam switch. Moving to the right, you'll find your foam level indicator. And then also, once again, there's that foam warning regarding foam failure and not to mix different brands, types, or consistencies of foam. Let's move uh, down from this location uh, more toward the center area. You're going to find your tank fill location. Just beneath that, you'll find a wheel for your tank to pump. As we move to the upper right hand corner, you'll find your fire pump primer. Uh, this is an air primer and so there are instructions just below regarding at least 1000 RPMs when engaging the air pump primer. Just beneath that, you'll find the engine cooler. That's going to be a twist, not a pull. And then out at the very bottom, you're going to find uh, your pump shift and then also a few more items here that we'll discuss at a little bit more in length here. This is your Watrous placard regarding your 2000 GPM capacity of your pump. Further down, you'll find your engine cooler, and then across the very bottom, uh, you're going to find your uh, pump drain. As we move further down, you'll see a set of uh, discharge drains. Uh, they're clearly color-coded and also labeled. These are the drains with the associated placard. Let's move now back to that Watrous placard. You have a CSU pump. Uh, it is a 2000 GPM pump, and it also gives your information regarding that pump placard on the pump placard. As we move to the left, you'll find two two and a half inch discharges. Just beneath that, you'll find your Pierce minimum operation maintenance schedule, which we'll go over in just a moment. And you'll also find this placard regarding a warning that only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment only after receiving proper training. Just beneath that, you'll find your two and a half inch auxiliary driver's inlet. To the right, behind the Pierce American Flag Eagle, this is your large diameter pump intake. You also have additional information regarding your foam system on the placard located here. Let's go back to the minimum operation maintenance schedule, which is down at the very bottom to the left hand side. This is going to be a 150, 200 and 250 PSI test pressures. On the left hand side are the associated GPMs and on the right hand side are the associated tachometer RPM ratings. This plaque does also house your job number 32583. Let's move downward from this location where you'll find your warm water rinse. The items just below this placard are going to be for that. This is your warm water rinse outlet down at the very bottom. And then you'll also find your warm water rinse inlet. At the very top, this is going to be your driver's side auxiliary inlet. Let's go ahead and move now up to the dunnage area where you'll find the top fill location for your water tank. You'll also find the fill location for your foam B tank. There is a warning label here again regarding do not mix brands consistencies of foam for foam failure. You'll also find these yellow diamonds indicating a safety edge for firefighter safety. Let's go ahead and now move to the uh, rear section of your apparatus. You can find a 10 foot folding attic ladder, 14 foot roof and 24 foot extension. As we move further back in the dunnage, you'll also find the location for your Harrison generator. Uh, that is gonna be the oil fill for it. This is also an indication not a step area. As we look down, also in the dunnage area, you'll find the tank here for your warm water rinse. That's the location for it. As we move to the cab itself, I would like to point out these warning labels. This is an extremely slippery surface. This is not intended for people to walk on. Let's go ahead and now move to the lower compartment. This is going to be on the driver's side. You'll find a toolbox and dry deck material. Moving up from that location on the back wall, you'll find tool mounting ability and also your G1 breaker box. Moving to the left hand side on that same wall is where you're going to find your Harrison generator module. Moving further down, you'll find your light tower module. 
And then further down, we have a few rocker switches here. I'll cover those in just a moment. And down at the very bottom, you'll find a digital readout regarding your warm water rinse. Let's go back up, take a look at the generator itself. This is a continuous power gener generator, so it does have a Harrison 8.0. They are individually breakered, so you can see 1 through 8, uh, and the G1, which once again stands for your generator. Let's uh, move to the left-hand side for your Harrison Amps Line 1 and Amps Line 2 and Frequency and AC Volt. This is the module for your generator. As we move also down, you'll find this module, which is for your light tower. Moving further down, you'll find your warm water rinse. You have the ability for 12 volt and 120 volt, and then also a water temperature indicator. We'll now move through some of those compartments and identify some of the things on the exterior of the vehicle. Let's first start just in front of the rear wheels is where you'll find SCBA bottle storage locations and also oxygen bottle location storage with retaining straps. As we move to the rear, you'll find a single bottle also access for your DEF tank, which is the blue tank, uh, blue cap, and it also is 4.5 gallons. Beneath that, you'll find your ultra low silver DESA, which is the silver cap. As we move to the right, you'll find two outlets here. They're both 20 amp. Moving to the center compartment, this is directly over the rear wheel. You'll find tool mounting on the back wall, LED lighting, and dry deck material. As we move to the rear compartment, you'll find a pull-out tray. The release mechanism is on the right-hand side. Moving just underneath this compartment is where you'll find your folding wheel chocks. The release is on the left-hand side. And as we move in the compartment itself, you'll find adjustable shelving and also ventilation. Let's now move up to the rear of the truck where you'll find your cluster housing the backup, turn, brake, and an emergency light. Moving up to the top of the door here, we're going to find an entanglement hazard warning because of those hoses coming aloft. And then also we have a couple warning labels here regarding fall hazard and that you should not ride on the back of the vehicle while it's in motion. Moving to the right at the top of the door area, you're also going to find a warning label here. This is a pressure hazard warning. And then as we move up to the very top right hand corner, you'll find a direct tank fill. Moving to the center just above the Pierce logo, you'll find your backup camera. Moving back up to the very far right hand corner uh, in this image is where you're going to find your drafting hoses. There are two of them. And then directly in the center is where you're going to find dividers for all of your cross loads and hose lays. As we look through some of these images, there's going to be some duplicates because these are on the same side as the driver's side, but let's go ahead and cover those individually also. First, let's take a look at the top of your ladder. You're going to find your ladder rack houses a 24-foot extension and a 16-foot roof. I think I may have said 14 earlier, but it is a 16. You do have an uh, engine identifier in the lower left-hand corner of the body. In this compartment, you'll find your e-tools. Uh, this is going to be a shelf at the very bottom that does pull out, and then mounting hardware for all of your individual rescue tools. Let's go ahead and now move to the side of the vehicle. This is just to the rear of the rear wheels. You'll find bottle storage locations for three SCBA bottles. Moving to the forward side, you'll find additional bottle storage for three SCBA bottles. Just over the rear wheel area, you'll find a side facing emergency light and also a 20 amp outlet. As we move to the center compartment, once again, that back wall is going to be for tool mounting of your equipment. And then as we move forward, you'll find a pull-out shelf down in the lower right-hand side, adjustable shelving, and also an outlet with inside this compartment. This outlet is activated when plugged into shore power. Let's go ahead and now move to the pump panel area. We'll first start at the very top. This is an access panel. We'll look inside that in the next set of images. To the right, you'll find your cord electrical rewind. And then to the right, there are two modules. First, the very top is your powered equipment rack. And the one just down beneath that in the white uh, module is going to be your cab lift. We'll talk about those individually also. Moving back to the left, you have an additional access point for access behind the panel. Moving slightly to the right, you're going to find your large diameter pump intake behind the Pierce American Flag Eagle logo. To the right, you'll find in green your large diameter pump discharge. And then moving further to the right, you'll find the only two and a half inch discharge on this side. Moving downward, 
we're going to find your two and a half inch auxiliary female inlet. And then we have an additional access panel in the very bottom right corner. And then also some drains which are independently color coded and labeled. We'll go over some of those items now with some close ups. Let's first start with that first top access panel. This gains access here to your equipment rack. This is the hydraulic reservoir. Moving down to the next panel, this is going to gain you access behind the panel for your relief valve. Moving back up to the top, this is a 20 amp, 100 foot electrical cord rewind. We'll talk about that in a moment. It's at the very top. This is your powered equipment rack. Moving down from this location will be your cab lift. Each of those modules have instructions and also an additional caution and danger labels. As we move at the very bottom, this is going to be your uh, grease zerk fittings. And as we move here to a general view, you can see from this side, number two passenger and also your large diameter discharge. As we move to the bottom, the passenger side, two and a half inch female auxiliary inlet. And down at the very bottom, all your associated color coded and labeled drains. Let's move back to the very top where we'll find that electrical cord. This is that switch down in the lower left hand corner, which allows you to rewind. As we move to the cab itself, we're just over the front tire on the passenger side where you'll find your side facing camera, also an emergency warning light located in this area. Just beneath of the fender cutout, you'll find additional storage just as you have on the driver's side. Let's take a look inside the compartment now. Then we'll go ahead and move uh, directly up from this location where we'll find a logo, which is going to be your Fairbanks, Alaska. And at the very top, you'll find a side facing scene light. As we move just inside, this is the rear section of the cab. At all points of entry, we're going to find these warning labels affixed to the door panels. There are three seats in the rear of this. They are all forward facing and they do all contain SCBA quick access. You'll also find your David Clark headset system and also your helmet holder. As we move to the officer's area, once again a point of entry, so we have these warning labels located here. In addition to that, you'll find a warning label here. Your vehicle is equipped with an airbag, an SRS supplemental restraint system, and that's what that warning label is pertaining, not blocking that airbag. Let's go ahead and now move to the officer's area. Just in the left-hand corner in the front of the officer area is where you'll find your command zone. Moving to the right, you'll find 12-volt access, barrel style, and USB. And then moving further to the right, you'll find your key access that's under Wi-Fi. Let's go ahead and move uh, just to the left back to the command uh, zone where you have a tremendous amount of information right here at your fingertips regarding your apparatus. Please see your owner's manual for more information. To the right, this is that Wi-Fi Knox box key location for secure storage. And to the left, you'll find your air horn, mechanical siren, and siren brake. Let's move overhead in the officer's area where you'll find an intense reading light or map light located here. And as we also look to the left, you'll find push on and off at the lens, white or red lights. Also, you'll find a digital readout on a speedometer located in the same vicinity. Moving just to the left is where you're going to find your seatbelt information regarding uh, occupants within the seat. Red indicating they're in the seat and not belted. Green that they're in the seat and belted. Moving to the officer's location, you'll find your MSA tick mount location. And then as we move to the uh, doors of the operator, we'll find a point of entry. So we're going to find those warning labels. You also find seatbelt information located on the seat. Directly below the seat on the pedestal is where you're going to find when plugged into shore power, your battery charging system activate and indicator will display. Let's move to the floor area where you'll find your mechanical siren located on a foot pedal next to the treadle. And as we move upward from this location about knee height, you'll find the master battery switch. And to the right, you'll find the tech module, engine ABS, transmission ABS diagnostic ports. As we move further down from this location, you're going to find four switches. Those four switches are part of the tech module and also uh, green ABS engine diagnostics. First, you'll start with the ABS diagnostics, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, and regen inhibit. Move just up from this location where you'll find the exhaust diverter and also your generator on and off switch. And moving back downward to the step area is where you're going to find your air inlet. At about the right ankle of the operators where you'll find this placard manufactured by Pierce for Fairbanks North Star Borough. This has your job number, which is that five digit job number. It has also information on gross vehicle weight ratings, cold tire inflation. It has your VIN number. It also has fluid capacities for the components, fluid capacity, and fluid type. 
As we move to about the right knee of the operator, you'll find your pump shift. There's information here on going from road to pump and also from pump to road. You will need when exiting the cab for pump operations, both green indicators illuminating. Let's move slightly to the right and just up a little bit in that same vicinity, you'll find your main mirror and convex mirror controls. And then as we move all the way to the uh, opposite side of the dash, we'll start with a few items within this area. This is just a general view here. Let's first start at the pull to apply your system parking brake, push to release. That is the yellow diamond located in the center. Just to the right of it, you'll find your Allison transmission pad with an indication to pump in drive. And then all the way at the very top, you'll find your command zone located at the very top. Once again, engine diagnostic information within that command zone. Just beneath that, you'll find a set of switches. We'll go over those in just a few moments. And then also to the very far right, you'll find your climate control. Let's jump back to those switches real quick where you'll find your retarder on off switch. You also have an auto apply and then a four x four lock switch, fuel primer, fuel compartment heater, and then also in red, a siren brake. Let's go ahead and move now back to the center at the forward section, you'll find climate control. You'll also find some caution labels here regarding disengaging your retarder when on slippery surfaces. Let's move back to the cluster here at the steering column. First on the left, transmission oil, DEF level, and water temp. In the center, you'll find your tachometer and speedometer. To the right, you're gonna find volts, fuel, front and rear air. Diagnostic information will display above and below the speedometer. As we move overhead of the operator, we're going to find this placard regarding height 10 feet 9 inches, your length 34 feet 3 inches, and gross vehicle weight rating of 53,800 pounds. This also houses your uh, five digit job number. If you make any changes to your apparatus that would affect these, please update this placard. General view here of the overhead section of your cab. Let's go ahead and start now on the far left hand side with your emergency master. You have a high beam flash, air horn, opticom your moose light, and mirror heat. To the right of this location, you'll find driver side scene, passenger side scene, rear scene, front flood, tire chains, and your load manager. Moving to the right, you'll find your siren control and PA speaker system module. Let's go ahead and move further to the right. This is back at the steering column. You're gonna find your high idle and the okay to engage your high idle. Moving to the left, you'll find your start and ignition switches. Moving further to the right, you'll find your EM switch, which stands for Emergency Master, your headlights and also running lights. Located next to it, you'll also find a panel switch, which allows you to brighten or dim the lights within the panel area. Looking overhead, you'll find your Do Not Move Your Apparatus. It is a pulsating flashing red light indicating the center of the truck that you have a compartment or door open. You also have push on and off white and red lights located over the officer and driver's seat. Congratulations Fairbanks, Alaska on your new fire apparatus, job number 32583. If you have any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you.